By the time I got all my materials and was ready to start, there was only about 13 or 14 days remaining. Hi, I'm Sam from Black Zero Cosplay, and this is how I made Mysterio for Marvel Becoming. What attracted me to Mysterio right away is I like the ridiculous costumes. I saw Mysterio, this dude running around with a fishbowl on his head and doing magic, essentially. <laughs> I was like, okay, this guy, he's my guy. When I first get the images of the costume, I basically draw the suit of armor. I color code it kind of by layer or by the density and thickness of the foam that I have to use. So the step after that is I take a duct tape dummy of my torso that I have and I start laying out the patterns on top of that and then build up layers until I have most of the armor and then I cut them into pieces, label them, number them, and I trace them onto foam for the final build. After I had my patterns, I started to tackle the foam elements. You trace your patterns onto an EVA foam. You cut your shapes out with a very, very sharp X-Acto knife as precisely as you can. The next step is heating it up with a heat gun and then shaping it. Then you can move on to your detail layers. And your detail layers are a thinner layer of foam usually. And Mysterio has a lot of detail. The way you attach it is with something called contact cement. So you apply contact cement to both of the EVA foam pieces that you want to join. And then once you let that dry and stick them together, there is nothing that can separate them. Once your armor is all finished, you're going to want to run a heat gun over it to kind of seal the surface. So after your foam is all heat sealed and it's ready to go, the next step for reinforcing it is a uh, sealant of some sort. You can use whatever you're comfortable with, but I personally use a, a rubberized coating that I spray on. And uh, it gives it a lot of surface strength because it rubberizes the entire suit kind of into one piece. So once your armor is all sealed up, you can move on to paint. And I typically use spray paint. So once it's all uh, spray painted with your base coat, you can then move on to kind of the detail layers. If there's pieces that are slightly different color or you know a different sheen to it, you can move on to acrylics. And then the top layer that goes on that would be the weathering, which is my favorite part because it's what makes your armor actually look like it's used and lived in. And on Mysterio, I'm particularly proud of the gauntlets. So one gauntlet, I had to hand carve probably 100, 125 lines on each gauntlet. And then I had to do that twice. On the top of the gauntlet, around the end of the forearm, there's a strip of uh, metal that has kind of a Baroque, fancy engraved look to it. What it ended up doing was finding a plastic stamp for making greeting cards with designs on them. And I heated up the foam that I was gonna use, and then I pressed the stamp into it as hard as I could. And when I removed it, the Baroque pattern from the stamp actually stayed in the foam. And for the helmet, which was also incredibly tricky, I found a 14 inch acrylic globe, and I added some foam detail bits to the outside. The undersuit for Mysterio in the movie is what I think is a, uh, a custom screen printed, you know, lycra, stretchy spandex kind of thing. We went to a company in France who does custom screen printing and they were able to print right onto four-way stretch fabric, uh, essentially a, a raised, textured, rubberized brick pattern. Then we had to, you know, piece it out and sew it up and we ended up with something that's pretty close. The cape for Mysterio was a massive challenge on this build. We found some cape fabric that we think is pretty close to what they used in the film, and we cut it out into panels, because Mysterio actually has two capes that are sewn together in the middle, and then from there came the designs that are on the cape. Uh, so what we ended up doing was freehand drawing that pattern onto grid paper, and then we transferred that pattern onto thin uh, poster board, and then we cut a stencil from the poster board, and then laid the poster board on the cape, and we used the same rubberized coating that we used on the suit, and from a, you know, a direct 90 degree angle, we just sprayed downward. The suit also has a lot of light up elements. The chest has several panels. So for that, what we did was we found a window cling that had kind of an interesting tessellated uh, pattern on it. And we cut that out to the shapes that we needed and we applied them to um, a piece of moldable plastic. And then from there, we wired up blue LEDs to nine volt batteries and we installed those from behind inside of the chest. 
And then from there, we just finished up with basic accessories, you know, tactical gloves, uh, very similar to what he wears in the movie, detailed pieces of armor on his legs, uh, he has knee pads attached to the boots, and um, use the same process that I just talked about for all of those. There's always a moment with any cosplay I do when the foam armor is almost done, and I can't really see what the finished product is gonna look like in my head until I put that stuff on and I see kind of the basic shapes on my body. Then I get this overwhelming feeling that I can see that everything fits together, everything's to scale, and that's a really great moment in the process of building a costume is when it clicks and you can see it in your head finished for the first time.